Hello everyone, Genesis Writer here with the Genesis Thoughts Episode 4, where I take a topic that has normally been circulated quite frequently by the community, and I address it with my own thoughts and opinions, and give you my advice on said topic. Uh, this episode's topic will be clans, and I'm specifically going for clans related to the Halo, obviously, because that is the game series I come from and most frequently play in the online multiplayer realm of things. Um, so I'll start with some of, I guess, my experiences with clans, and no, I will not be naming a bunch of uh, names of clans I have been in. I have been in over five clans um, throughout my five plus years of being on Xbox Live. Before then, I wasn't in any clans on the computer or any other games, so my main experience with clans is over Xbox Live. And for those of you who don't know really what clans are, um, clans are essentially a group or a community of people um, who get together, and, and on Xbox Live, what it, this normally looks like um, is a bunch of people playing the same game um, in lobbies and um, so oftentimes they have a website and oftentimes there's various things you change in your in-game character or on your Xbox Live uh, player card profile to align yourself with the clan and there's events and things you participate in, practices and basically a lot of fun stuff that you can do together as a group. Now, how I'm going to be approaching this is a very um, analytical, from a very analytical standpoint, very um, in-depth in terms of some of the negative things that I believe that clans can portray. And while I will go into one or two of the big positive things that clans can be for a person, this video is basically going to be formatted such that after watching this, you will know or understand much better whether you should join a clan or not. And if you have joined a clan in the past or if you are already in a clan, It'll help you better understand why clans may not be as helpful or as great as they make themselves out to be. Basically giving you an overall very realistic or well-rounded view of clans, hopefully. So starting out here, let's talk a little bit about uh, my own personal experience with clans. So within at least six months of getting on Xbox Live and getting Halo 3, which is where I started out in the um, analog stick, uh, multiplayer realm of shooters, having already played the Halo games up to this standpoint on the computer, um, I quickly started receiving clan invite messages after matchmaking games. And this is a very frequent and very common thing, especially if you are high ranked, um, and especially if you're playing bigger playlists, and especially if you're playing social playlists. Like anything above 5v5, um, 6v6, 8v8, you're going to get a lot of clan invites pretty frequently. And essentially, these messages are either text messages or voice messages, and they s say something to the effect of, uh, let's see if I can uh, come up with one on the spot here. Hello, I'm from DHG Diehard Gamers, and we're looking for clan members. Uh, if you could send me an invite, you need a mic, and you need to be above the age of 18. Uh, thank you. And then that's it. Okay, now I'm, I'm making something up, but DHG is a clan Diehard Gamers, and I was a part, a part of them at one point. But... Um, here I am saying that I'm not going to talk about the clans I was in. But anyway, um, that's the way these messages come across, is that these players will message you um, essentially after a game that has a lot of people in it. And I was a little bit confused by this when I first started playing Xbox Live because I wondered why I received clan invites when I played specific playlists way more than when I played other playlists. And it turns out, that they are simply wanting to put players on their recent players list. So essentially these recruiters or clan recruiters will go into a lobby that has a lot of people, then they will leave the lobby or I guess some, sometimes they will play through the entire game. Oftentimes I've had people literally leave in the middle of the game, which is getting into the negative stuff we're going to talk about. They will leave the lobby just so that everyone who was in that game is now on their recent players list making it easier to select everyone on their recent players who they just played with to send them a clan invite. So essentially, instead of sending one individual message to each individual person, you can select them all at once and do a mass clan invite message and then get a clan recruiting lobby going pretty quickly. Now, again, that's all good and well, hypothetically speaking, but 
one of the things I just mentioned right here is that these, pe these people will often quit out of game, like go into a big team battle game, let it find the map and search it, get into the game, and then quit out immediately just so they can send, just so they can get those 15 other people in the game a clan invite message. They're not interested in actually playing the game, which is an unfortunate side effect of people who want to get clan members into their clan. Um, it becomes uh, required to rank up inside clans, and this is where it gets kind of a little bit um, in depth. And I don't pretend to understand why clans pursue this method of thinking, but I'm going to try to break it down for you. And it's not something I agree with, and I'm I'm not honestly happy with the way many clans do this. But essentially, when you join a clan, you are on a very very basic level. You're a recruit, and oftentimes as a recruit, you are required to change a staggering amount of your profile. Now, many clans will claim that they won't, no, oh, we don't make you change too much, or blah, blah, blah. But the, the reality is when you're in practice or playing with your clan, it is likely you will have to change your armor color, your clan, your tag, your four character tag that appears above your head, um, your many stuff on your pre player profile and bio on your Xbox Live player card, who recruited you, when they recruited you, what clan you're a part of, um, what squad you're a part of, a wide variety of things, and even uh, to the point of changing your emblem inside the game to be a specific emblem, and you can't change your emblem as long as you're playing with your clan until you've ranked up. So simple, uh, essentially, your emblem inside the Halo game signifies your rank, if that makes sense. And yes, you could change it to the higher emblem at any point in time, but then they'd kick you out if you kept doing that because they want you to keep the lower ranked emblem. In other words, it's kind of, it's really based on an honor system way of thinking, okay? Clans like to simulate this ranking system within their clan by using elements inside the game that really don't mean anything. Your armor color and other, other things that, while a younger generation or a younger group of players, let's say, below the age of 12, might really, really get into that sort of thing, and that'd be amazing, okay? And I'm not saying people, you know, who are above the age of 12 wouldn't get into it. I'm saying it's much more appealing to that age group, okay? They would really get into that and be like, oh, I got, I've got the next rank in my clan. I can use the gold color. But in reality, you can use the gold color whenever you want to, and your clan is forcing you to do that to make you appear differently inside the clan as ranked compared to other people. Here's where it gets really unfortunate. Not only do you, are you forced to change this stuff, you're not given a say in what you change and why you change it but uh, to join the clan, but essentially, you there's this background system that a lot of people need to understand about clans, and that is the ma vast majority of clans, I've rarely ever seen a clan that doesn't do this, you are given your rank, and you can rank up far more quickly if you get more recruits. So... Now, just think about that for a second. Now it kind of makes sense, these people who, oh my gosh, there's a bug on my monitor. <laughs> um, there's a, it makes sense now why people, oh, okay, they're going into big team battle lobbies and sending out these mass messages. Why would they take the trouble to do that? Because they want to rank up in their clan, you see. And I didn't get that when I first was on Xbox Live. I thought these people were specifically choosing me out of everyone else to invite to their clan because they thought I was good. That is not true at all. It is almost never the case. And clan recruiters who, who are sneaky about it will actually address their messages or their voice messages as if they're talking to you and you only. Oh, I played with you, thought you were pretty good. But you have to realize they're not just sending this message to you, they're sending this message to multiple other people. Be very, very wary of this, okay? So it, it comes down to uh, the fact that clans will force you to do a certain amount of things, and you need to be aware of that. And that's other things that they will force you to go through oftentimes are practices. They will have a set time where they go through practice. And I, I have to unfortunately state again here, a negative uh, side effect of this is that practices often turn into uh people talking in the lobby, sitting around talking in the lobby uh, without playing the game for a long period of time, or they are inside the game in a custom game where you just stand around in this kind of arena mode where you're just 
it, it's this uh, stadium where, where the one person speaks at a time in the center of the stage, essentially. So they, in Forge, create a stage where the clan meets. Okay, again, it's inside the game. It's kind of strange. I don't know why you wouldn't just talk it out in the lobby. Makes no sense to me. You can easily see who's talking in the lobby, and you can't really in a custom game unless you are not all in a party. But anyway, um, they'll oftentimes do that, or they will just completely play cus fun custom games during practice. They won't actually play something that will help you get better at the game. Now, now I want to pause here and say something. I, I'm not against custom games, okay? What I am against is consistently playing a game type where the setting, specifically the movement settings and the movement feel of the game, does not reflect what is currently in matchmaking, okay? And this is where, this is a tough, because even in Halo Reach, they would have a separate playlist for MLG that had different movement and different gravity settings or traits, and in actual matchmaking, there were baseline traits. And I loved in the fact that the fact in Halo 3 that these traits were loosely the same. Okay, in Halo 2 and 3, the competitive settings were very similar to the normal matchmaking settings, so you didn't feel like too much that they were widely varying or widely different. In Halo Reach, we really got off track with the settings being different. Well, you can understand where, if you're going into a clan practice and you're playing custom games where you're playing with 200% movement speed, while there is a some will argue that playing any game type will help you improve your Halo skill, which is loosely true, okay? Let me get, throw you a scenario to help you think about this. Let's say you're playing baseball, bat and ball, and someone is throwing an actual baseball at you, and you're using a, you know, league standard bat, all right? That's going to be really good practice. It's going to be tough because it's heavy, but it's going to be really good practice on you. And let's say the person is throwing the speed that someone normally throws in the higher levels. It's going to be really tough. But you're going to learn a lot and way more and be far more realistically prepared for actual competitive scenarios. And be you're going to ultimately be far better than anyone else, okay, if you consistently play that way. However, if someone is throwing you a tennis ball at far lower speeds and you're using a hollowed wooden bat or something that's you know super light you can still learn to play baseball from that but it's not something that's actually going to realistically prepare you for the brutality of online matchmaking against good people okay and many people don't care about that and i under i understand that if you don't care and you want to play casual, non-competitive custom games, go for it. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. Okay? There's nothing wrong with that. But if you actually want to improve your skill at the game, oftentimes what I've experienced with clans is they, they do not provide this type of practice and game improvement when they say practice and when they say, oh, we have a competitive lobby and blah, blah, blah. Oftentimes, even if the clan does support these things, kind of, on the side, it is small part of the clan in comparison to the huge number of casual members. And going back to uh, the ranking and how you gain, um, if you allow people to join your clan or recruit them to your clan, you rank up more quickly. Oftentimes what this means is that people who weren't meant to be in leadership positions, but who have the time to go through uh, matchmaking and invite a bunch of people to their clan and get a lot of recruits, they will rank up faster than those people who actually should be in leadership positions, who maybe don't necessarily uh, have the time to go about leading the clan and, and getting recruits. It's really unfortunate, okay? Um, I was actually uh, the moderator for a clan website at one point um, and all that they uh, switched to Call of Duty and that was pretty dumb and there were, I've had so many experience with clans and things of that nature and over time and this is what I'm going to pose to you guys before I go into the positives of clans obviously I don't want to just leave you with a bunch of negative uh, bullcrap um, in my opinions you know because they are just my opinions and my experiences I have had good experience with clans um, but the vast majority of the time, I've joined a clan, and it's really hard to get into the 
social network of the clan. Once you get to know the clan members, I'm sure it would be a bunch more fun. But as it is, they have their own cliques and groups already kind of established. And it's very difficult unless you consistently get on and participate, unless you are online very consistently to make something out of a clan. If, if you want to get a lot of people on your friends list fast, okay, and you don't necessarily care about knowing them personally, and you just want to play the game, no matter if it's custom games or matchmaking or anything, I'd highly suggest there's many different clans out there, KSI, DHG, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that I, you know, I could say, okay, look, you know, go talk to this person or talk to this person. What I'm trying to tell you is that this is a very casual and imperfect system where you may play a lot of custom games and stuff, and you may get to know a lot of people, but it's you're not necessarily going to be playing all as a clan all the time. You're going to be finding clan members on a friends list, and you know, um, and they'll they'll explain that to you, and you'll you'll get a bunch of people in your friends list fast. But what I have found is far more effective at getting people on your friends list who are interested in winning and bettering themselves in online matchmaking and getting better, whether it's through custom games or online matchmaking is that you individually friend request people, not just friend requesting people because you played a game or two with them, but because you found them through another friend of yours or you played a bunch of matchmaking games with them consistently for a few days and you're like, okay, I want to friend request you, man. Like, let's let's try to continue playing together. And if they don't, you know, if they don't continue to play Halo or the game you're consistently trying to get better at, um, just remove them. There's nothing saying that you have to keep them on the, your friends list. People have this... Um, I've talked to so many people who will keep, you know, 100, 200 people in their friends list. I don't know what the maximum is, but be, just because they feel like they owe this person something because maybe they sent the friend request first and then the person accepted so they don't want to cancel it because that would be kind of awkward. Or that person sent them one and then they accepted so they feel this like they owe this person for something. You don't owe these people anything, especially if you haven't played with them consistently or talked with them consistently. especially. And I'm not talking about people you know in real life. Let's let, That's a category off to the side. You're probably going to want to keep those people on your friends list regardless, right? But if these are random people you're finding online matchmaking and you're you're trying to find people who are good at the game and play what you play and, and stuff like that and you're trying them out, feel free to send a temporary friend request and, and include a voice message with the friend request. That's what voice messages in the friend requests are for. Just like, hey, look, I just want to send you a temporary friend request and see if we can play. It clans... Um, you're going to meet a lot of people very quickly and have a bunch of people to play with, but it's not necessarily going to better yourself, and you're not going to be the party lead all the time. You're going to be forced to play a lot of things you may not want to play. Again, if you're just if you're just casually wanting to play the game and that's it, and you don't really care what you play, and if you really if you really like cool, fun, interesting competitive or you know fun and interesting uh, maps and game flood game types and a bunch of random stuff, duck hunt and Jenga and crazy, you know, stuff, then go for it. You know, clans are, from my experience, a good way to experience a lot of that stuff. You can have a bunch of fun. But if you actually want to get better at the game, there's nothing better than making your friends list and building your friends list dedicated towards people who you see are trying to get better, who are calling out, who have mics, who are not necessarily super good at the game. Okay, I don't have, I have many people on my friends list who are not you know, super good at the game or who don't play as consistently as maybe I do, but they do play somewhat consistently and they do tend to come back. And key part is they tend to get online when I'm online and they tend to accept my game invites, which is probably one of the most crucial things. And so there's this this standpoint of competitiveness and trying to get better and not necessarily no radar pro level com- competition. That's really high. You know, when you say pro, pro is often se- severely misused. And that's not really what I want to bring to this conversation because that's a level much higher above this conversation where we're just talking about casual clan based custom games versus, you know, matchmaking with a team or just with people calling out or custom games with a team and people calling out. Um, but again, I just find it frustrating the, the difference in the movement speeds in comparison. I'd rather be consistently playing on the same movement speeds and stuff. Like with the baseball analogy I gave earlier, I'd rather be always with a hollow wooden bat and tennis ball. I'd rather always do that than be flipping between the normal and the the old. You see what I'm saying? Like I, 
I'd rather always be in a realistic baseball setting or always not be, you know what I mean? So that I could at least get really good at one or the other. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. I hope that this Genesis Thoughts video helped you understand clans in general and and where they're coming from and helped you determine whether cl uh, a clans are for you. Again, I'm not going to... Uh, I won't. I will not be suggesting clans to you guys because I've been burned by far too many clans who who uh, said they had some sort of competitive or or skill based way. Okay, I, we're gonna help you get better at the game itself, and um, that's something you really have to determine. Be clear with yourself on that goal as to whether you want to get better or whether you just want to have fun and and play. Um, and if you are interested in getting uh, getting better, and and not only that, but you're, you're calling out, you're trying to play well, you consistently play Halo, and you have a mic, and um, everything of that nature, I mean, leave your gamertag below, and I'll see what I can do. Or send me a message uh, at my gamertag, Genesis Rider. Just send me a text uh, message over Xbox Live saying, invite, question mark. And I'll go down my list and invite people if I need players, and if you're online, you can join me. So guys, I hope you liked uh, this Genesis Thoughts video where I take a topic and talk about it. If you want to suggest your own topic for my a next Genesis Thoughts video, feel free to comment down in the comment section below. Um, please like the video. It helps people find it and helps me out a lot. Um, subscribe for more future Destiny, Halo, Halo 5 Guardians, Halo 5 Beta even content. And I'll see you guys in the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace.